GM fam, it's time to talk about Viper. If you follow Curve Finance like I do, you'll know they're extremely bullish on a smart contract programming language called Viper, and deservedly so, it's a major competitive advantage for Curve. So you're probably interested to learn a bit more, and you've come to the right place. Whether you're new to smart contract development, or a seasoned professional looking to hone up your skills, this tutorial is going to give you a comprehensive understanding of everything you need to know about Viper. Together, from scratch, we're going to be coding a complete Viper application and preparing to deploy it to the blockchain, all in a series of comprehensible, easy to understand, 5-10 to 10 minute YouTube videos. In fact, we're going to get started with some coding at the end of this video, but first, let's walk through a bit of the history of Viper. This tutorial is going to assume that you're already understanding of the Ethereum blockchain. Hopefully you've already played around on Etherscan, maybe read through some smart contracts, maybe even deployed some funds to them. If you do, you're certainly well aware of Solidity. It was the first programming language for smart contracts, and it's made life a lot easier. It was launched in 2014 with a Java style of inspiration. It's got those curly brackets that you see in Java, JavaScript, and I'm not really a fan of that syntax, but it's way better than the EVM. What Solidity is doing is giving you a human readable syntax to understand what's going on, but when you're done, it compiles it to the EVM code, Ethereum Virtual Machine, that is what's running on every single node. That's really tough to understand, so we're much better off having Solidity. But in 2018, Vitalik Buterin launched Viper. Viper has since been absorbed by the community, and it's evolved into a fully Pythonic syntax. It's, in its four years, caught up with Solidity, and in many cases surpassed it. And given that I prefer Python, the syntax alone makes me prefer Viper, but it has a number of other core features that are great. Let's talk about what some of these are. The values underlying Viper. Security, simplicity, and auditability. What do we mean by this? You've certainly heard about smart contract hacks. Sometimes they total in the millions. It's so easy to write bad code, and hackers are always looking to exploit it. Viper thinks, why don't we design a language that makes it possible, and even natural, to build secure smart contracts? By default, if you don't know anything, let's err on the side of making your contract safer. One of the easiest ways to accomplish this is through simplicity. The language and the compiler implementation should strive to be simple. If you load up a Viper contract on Etherscan, it should be easy for the reader, especially, to be able to understand what's going on under the hood. In particular, even readers with low programming experience. This is where the Pythonic syntax comes in. Python is very naturally built to be human readable. It has a visually appealing flow, so you can understand through the indents what's going on with the program. And overall, a Viper contract is fairly easy to look at for even very basic people and gain an appreciation for what's going on. And this allows it to have greater auditability because Viper has maximized human readability and made it difficult to write misleading code. We'll talk in a second about some of these features, but first let's just talk about the pure efficiency. I don't know if this is an accident or not, but the Viper compiler is screamingly efficient. This is not something that Solidity has terribly optimized. Now they could, so I don't expect this is going to be the defining feature of Viper forever, but at least at the moment, if you compare, for example, the code on the left, which is Solidity, and the equivalent code on the right, which is Viper, and how the compiler compiles it, you'll notice that the EVM bytecode for the Solidity on the left is an order of magnitude larger than that of Viper. This has significant savings, most notably gas. It's, generally speaking, in 2022 when we're publishing this video, going to be cheaper to execute a contract using Viper. This is a race to the bottom, though. If Solidity decides to prioritize this, this will catch up. So Viper has to have other important features. One of the interesting things about Viper, which makes it a bit difficult for Solidity programmers to pick up, is that it's Turing incomplete. And this is because the blockchain, the EVM, is also Turing incomplete. It's not going to be able to execute programs forever. It has to be able to halt. Solidity, the language, is Turing complete. So it could theoretically run an infinite program, but the EVM can't. In this way, Viper is intentionally built to be more compatible with the reality of the EVM blockchain, but it does change some coding things which you might be used to in Solidity. For example, in Solidity, there you can have recursion. You can have infinite length loops. 
Viper does not allow these. Viper requires all arrays to be capped. You can't have an infinite length array. You have to declare up front how long your array can be. It's more realistic, but it's a bit of a learning curve. There's a few other important distinctions. There's no modifiers in Viper. In Solidity, it's common to have, for example, an, an only owner modifier. So when you're reading a function, you'll say, okay, I can refer to this modifier and see what it does. Viper wants it to be more readable, so it doesn't want you jumping all over the contract to try and understand what these modifiers do. You've got to put it all in the same function. Similarly, there's no function overloading, which as explained in Viper's documentation, could actually lead to some security flaws. And for now, there's no inheritance, although this is changing fast, and in fact, by the time the video is published, it may have changed. Through this course, we're going to be structuring this where we're going to require you use Brownie, which is a uh, testing framework. And there's a reason for this. In the GitHub repository, which we're going to link in the show notes, every exercise we do is going to have the unsolved version with tests, so you can code along with the videos at home, and the solved version. If you code the unsolved version at home and code it successfully, the Brownie test will pass. It's that easy. If you're not familiar with Brownie, we're also going to link another Brownie tutorial you can take done by yours truly. And finally, the objective. What are we going to build together over the course of these next several videos? There's been a lot of talk about a curved stablecoin, so we thought it'd be fun to build ourselves a very simple curved stablecoin. This is not the kind that's architected by, say, a genius Chad developer like Michael Egorov. This is just going to be something simple that we can build out to get our feet wet. And if you have Brownie installed, you can start this first lesson right now. Either way, we recommend everybody refer to the documentation. We're linking this as well as some other Viper resources in the show notes, but the documentation is great. It's got a bunch of examples. Generally, you can find whatever you need within the documentation. But let's get to the code. If we would like to build out a curve-based stablecoin, what are we going to need? We're going to need an ERC-20 token. So this lesson is the easiest possible lesson. As long as you have Brownie installed, simply brownie bake viper token and this is going to create a default vanilla ERC20 token built off of viper now if we pop in this directory and look at the contracts token.vy you can get a look through viper to start to understand a bit of the syntax but some things to note viper is already on version 3 but the syntax has stayed constant enough between version 2 and version 3 that this basic token works just fine. You could deploy this token right now and it would be a fully compatible ERC20 token. Probably wouldn't want to do it, you'd probably want to tighten up a few of the things, but it gives you a sense of how Viper works. And reading through it you can see all your favorite ERC20 functions. Balance of, setting approvals, making transfers, said it's ready to roll. So if you're running this exercise at home, how can you verify that you have executed this correctly? This also has Viper tests. So if you run the tests, at the end of the exercise, you should expect to get everything coming out green, everything coming out clean. That's how you're going to know. The next several lessons, we're going to be uh, including the uh, tests in the unsolved folder, but we'll get to that in the future lessons. For now, Take a look through the Viper token, read through the documentation, and let us know in the comments. Do you have any questions? What would you like to see? Is there anything that's not clear? We're always happy to help out.